All right, welcome back into the Auburn Live Show, the Auburn Live Football Show. Appreciate everybody for joining us. I'm Justin Hokinson. With me, as always, Mr. Cole Pinkston. Cole, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hopefully, the audio is better this week. I know there's a lot of people that care about that, myself included. When got a new microphone, we should be good. Sounds great, man. You sound good. <laughs> Everybody's going to hear us loud and clear moan and complain about Auburn's offense today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll try to uh, we'll try to talk about some specific things. Um, before we get into that, quick shout out to Session Cocktail, sp- the sponsor of the show. Um, go check them out, downtown Auburn, right there on Magnolia Avenue. Um, great happy hour drinks, four to six specials there. Um, game day is a good spot to go go post up before the game. Even watch the game. There's TVs in there, so you can watch the game during the game. Um, if you come into town, great spot on Thursday night. They're really busy on Thursday night generally. I think people come into town early or people that are in Auburn go out to eat Thursday night so they, they can avoid the craziness Friday night. But Thursday night's a great night to go out, of course, Friday night. Um, and then you can go out Saturday night. This game's at 2.30, so you could, you know, plenty of time to go out Saturday night as well. But uh, go check them out, the good people at Session Cocktail. Tell them that we sent you at auburnlive.com. And uh, I know uh, – We'll appreciate it, and, and you'll enjoy your time there. Um, all right, Cole. <clears throat> Let's talk about a couple things. I want to talk about <clears throat> a few things that Hugh Freeze said during his press conference on Monday and then kind of um, uh, turn into some things that we heard from Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne uh, on Tuesday. Um, we actually got to speak to them. That'll probably be the only time we speak to them this season. Probably like a mid-season, like, all right, here's here you get one chance to talk to the quarterbacks. Um, and so I, I don't know that we'll speak to them again. Um, but Freeze on on Monday, I thought he was a little bit more upbeat than I than I expected him to be. Um, he, you know, he kind of came out talking about it, recruiting and expectations, and hey, guys, we we know Auburn needs to be at this high level. Um, and so that's probably smart to try to calm some of the fans um, and say, look, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Don't overreact to what's going on. We've played three really good football teams in a row. Don't overreact to what's going on. Probably a, probably a fair thing. But there's a couple of things I wrote about in my three big storylines that I want to get your thoughts on. And that is, will Auburn increase the tempo? Will Auburn throw more passes? Those are probably the two main things. We don't really have to get into expectations and kind of what Hugh Freeze said, although we can. Um, kind of offer some opinions on that. But he said a couple of things as far as tempo. He said, look, I'm I'm comfortable running tempo. Philip Montgomery's comfortable running tempo. Peyton seems to be more comfortable running tempo. But obviously he admits that his defense is thin and that it's it's a double edged sword to him. You know, he's like, I, I don't want to I don't want to hurt my defense, but um but but but, the, but we are more comfortable doing that stuff. And then he also talked about the passing game. And he said, look, I think we've established that we can run the ball fairly well. Auburn's not dominant running the ball, but they're okay. They're, they're decent. They're above average in the SEC. Um, but he said, he said, I think it's now time that we try to become more balanced. Um, he, said, he, said, uh, he said, I think we now have to play balanced football. We have to find things that the players can do, receivers, quarterbacks, protections, and be more aggressive in calling those. Now, does that actually happen? I don't know. It remains to be seen. But what do you kind of make of those two comments? Um, is it strictly because of who they're playing? Because you're not playing Georgia or LSU? Is it? Do you feel like you can be a little more aggressive because the margin of error is a little bit greater because the team is not as good? Or is this just enough is enough? He's seen enough. We got to do something different. What do you kind of make of maybe hinting at a little more tempo, maybe a few more passes, maybe. Yeah, he, he's going to have more confidence going into these games because of the rosters and how they match up. Uh, because he he is, you know, we know how he feels about about not having the roster where he wants it, and I don't think that's a shot at his players like some people may perceive. I think it's more, hey, Marcus Harris, you're really good. I need three of you. I only have one. I don't have enough. Of, of you i got some really good players at the top and i don't have much behind you so that's what he's worried about on the defense the the word balance scares me a little bit with with them <clears throat> because i saw them try to balance it um 
strictly from a st- statistics standpoint, it was a little more balanced against Ole Miss because they kept running the little shoot route that's, you know, a flat route down the line of scrimmage to the tight ends. That's a pass. <laughs> so that counts as a pass. I don't know if that's what they mean by balanced or do they mean we're going to throw it down field more. I think that would be good. I, I, I don't see how that's a bad thing. Um, you probably shouldn't have won the California game, but you were you hung in there. You hit some downfield passes in that game. Just a couple. Not many, just a couple. And you see that can help you win these games that are closer matched. So, I mean, California, Mississippi State, Vandy, that's kind of your range you're playing in right now. That You know, that's that's about the same roster for the most part. Mississippi sure. State probably beats them. Vandy's, that's a close game, I think. I think. Right? So, you have to have more confidence going in. And balance scares me a little bit because I, I thought there were several times – especially as I'm going back and watching this game. Why didn't you just run it? Why didn't you just run the football? Y'all gashed them on first down one time, got it down to second and two. You run a sort of like a little, I don't think it was supposed to be a trick play or not trick play, excuse me, but a cute play, I guess you would say, and trying to get the little rollout, but Ashford turns the wrong way on the play. And now you're screwed. (laughs) You're back in third and 10. Just run it again. You gashed them. I to me, there's not enough consistency with that. When you have a good play, and if you're so worried about keeping your offense on the field and giving your defense a rest, do whatever you can to get that first down. And it it seems like you're trying to think too much on some of those short yardage plays. The best short yardage play of the year so far was um the Wildcat touchdown with Hunter in there and Jaden Muskrat in the backfield. You, we talked about this. I was like, Justin, why don't they just line up in that formation <laughs> 10 more times today? I don't care where they're at on the field. <clears throat> no, I mean, seriously, th- there needs to be more consistency there. So the word balance scares me a little bit. I don't know what he means by it. Does he mean more of the shoot route passes where it's just a one-yard flat route down the line of scrimmage, or does he mean downfield? I hope he means downfield. I think he means downfield. I, mean, I think he means legit passing. I rewatched um a good bit of the game – uh last night on the on the telecast um and uh got towards the end <clears throat> and i didn't realize when we were watching it because there's a there's when i'm watching a game i mean <clears throat> up in the press box there's a ton of things going through my head I'm, I'm, I'm watching the game i'm looking at stats i'm thinking about what i'm gonna write after the game there's a lot of stuff going on but i you know i didn't realize that before the before the second to last drive of the game before Peyton's last two drives, that they'd only thrown like six passes in the game. And well, then the, and then the drive, I think it was the second to last drive, Peyton threw six passes in that drive alone. And Jesse Palmer was pointing it out and just saying, it was just, it was funny <laughs> listening to Jesse Palmer on the telecast. He's like, he's like, you're wondering where, why haven't they done this all game? Like here they are, they're throwing the ball, they complete a few passes. He's like, where, where is the effort to do this? during during the game and you can almost hear in his mind he's like i don't understand like wh- wh- why is this just coming up at the end of the fourth quarter so i think i think when he's talking about balance he's talking about throwing the football down the field now the challenge with that is if you noticed in that game here's who caught the ball take away jarquez's three catches which is second on the team in that game rivaldo fairweather jay fair caleb burton Coy Moore, let's see if I'm missing somebody, um, and Tyler Fromm. What do all those people have in common? They're all they inside have. people. Yeah, yeah. No outside so, receivers. So if you want to be more balanced and throw the ball, <clears throat> how do you like who how do you do it if you don't even throw it on the outside? Yeah. Everything's kind of short or middle of the field. There's no, there's just no threat. So I I love the idea of being more balanced. I wish Peyton would have more opportunities to to run a little bit of spread you out, a little bit of tempo. I've been begging for that. But at the same time, you know, the receivers are not getting open. And 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 so it's kind of a double-edged sword of um how do you become more balanced and do that and if you don't think you have the receivers that can run the proper routes and create separation and 
especially on the outside. Um, but you got to try. I'm with you know. It's like what you've said recently. You got you got to try. You have to try to be more aggressive. Um, yeah. Well, did you say it was like four of six passing or whatever? Two of six, whatever it was at that point. Well, I think I think Palmer mentioned that that, that up until Peyton's second to last drive, that there had only been six passes thrown in the game, and then well, he threw six passes in the in that drive alone. There were six passes thrown. There were more passes called. Uh, you got to account for the sacks. You got to account for the times that Peyton ran with it on a passing play. I Ashford ran with it. So it was a little more balanced than maybe perceived by the stats, but it still wasn't good. And I'm with you there. You you, you got to involve your outside receivers a little bit. I, I liked, I was a fan, even though they were not all that successful of the shot plays when you have single coverage, which Ole Miss didn't really do that. Honestly, they, they had a five man box and they had two safeties for the most part. So handing it off was the, the right read on the RPOs that they called. And that's what they ended up getting a lot. That tells me they ran a lot of RPOs and they were looking for some of these short routes on the RPOs, the hitches, the slants, the those kind of things. Ole Miss took it away and said, all right, let's see how good you are running the football, which is interesting because they knew that Ashford would be more of a part of the game plan. It's, it, it, they, they, uh, they thought of everything in, in, in a way. You would think people would load the box, and they did sometimes, but the five-man box is where they ended up getting a lot of their runs from, which means – I think they were a little more pass minded in this game. And they're probably going to be that way going forward uh, for, for the most part, if you consider it an RPO pass minded, uh, because I think they want to get that read if they can. Peyton Thorne ran all these RPOs. He was just doing what the read dictated and handing it off. So it turns into a run. That's uh, a lot of RPOs called, I thought. Um, <clears throat> then, I, you know, there's just not – there's an attempt to throw it downfield a couple of times early in the game, and then Ashford couldn't do it. Thorne got sacked, and they said, all right, that's it. We're done. I, I just don't know if that's how you go about it. You, you still have your plays that you want to run. I say run them. But also, on the other side of that coin, when you're gashing somebody in the run game, don't try to be cute about it. Run it again. I mean, this is – you're trying to run the clock. You're trying to shorten the game, and you're trying to get first downs. Don't overthink it. That that would be my take on it. I, I don't know if that's right or not because I don't know the roster and I don't know everything they're dealing with. But it seems like that would be the better approach. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think what you're saying is right. I mean, there were definitely a couple of times I remember where they had a good run and then they came back after that and and tried to get cute maybe. Um, so I agree with you there. But I think overall that th they're going to have to force themselves to to. Th you can't be in the fourth quarter. I mean, looked it up. And yes, there were a couple times maybe where Peyton dropped back and got sacked or scrambled or whatever. But you know that's that's a few times. Peyton Thorne was one of two passing until seven fifty one in the fourth quarter, and yep. then he threw <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He attempted 11 passes in the fourth quarter. He attempted two in the first three. Um, if you want to toss a couple sacks in there, whatever. But that that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And and the more you play these teams, the here's the issue. They're going to see you and go, well, I mean, we talked about this a little bit for LSU. I mentioned like teams are going to start bringing a safety up and they're going to go, well, you're, you're not even going to try to throw. So why would we play you like you're going to throw? We're going to bring a guy up. We're going to make it that much harder for you to run the ball, to break a run. There's going to be more people. Maybe you run for three or four yards, but you're not going to break anything because there's going to be too many players around the line of scrimmage. Um, and so if nothing else, you have to throw the ball and attempt passes to to keep defenses honest on on you know over top. Um, they just got to figure out some of that vertical stuff. They got to figure out who can do that. They got guys like Jay Fair. Of course, Jay Fair dropped an easy pass against Ole Miss. Um, great ball from Peyton across the middle. I can't think it was a dig um, or a slant. I can't remember what it was, but perfect ball. Jay Fair drops it. Um, 
but you've got Rivaldo, you got Caleb. Bert. There's a couple guys I think can maybe do some things across the middle. I wish they would run more crossing routes because the routes they're running are not. I, look, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Marcus Davis. I, I I don't know. I mean, just the the way guys are running routes is not great. We talked about separation on the sideline on back shoulder throws about how they're getting run into the sideline. We talked about that against LSU. Um, go look at. You know, you and I were sitting there. Go look at Camden Brown on the play that Peyton, thro Peyton throws to him. It's third and four. Camden Brown runs a route that's two yards short or a yard short of the line. He gets zero separation. And then on top of all that, he allows the DB to come through him and make a play. Like, the whole thing was a joke. Um, so, I, I have an issue with how the receivers are running routes. There's things that you, when you watch them, even on simple curl routes, um, there's things they're doing that are just that are not helping their cause. They're not helping Peyton's cause. For instance, if you're running, let's say it's whatever, let's just call it like a six, six yard curl route. You can't be turning your head or or changing your hips before you before you're at the top of the route. The DB's got to feel like you're going and then boom, you stop it. So there's stuff that I'm seeing where they're starting to like. They're indicating that they're about to stop before they get to the top of the route, which allows the DB then to just completely pounce on that route. There's just stuff they're doing that is not helping anybody. It's not helping them, and it's certainly not helping the quarterback. It's not creating separation. So the challenge is – so that's why I wish they'd run a little bit across – use VAR or use Jay Fair if he'd catch the ball um, and cross a little bit. Run some crossing routes and allow them to, to use a little bit of the speed they have Keep using Rivaldo the way you're using him. I don't know how you fix the vertical stuff. Um, I, I don't know. Amari Kelly has got some ability. We haven't seen him in like five weeks. Um, you know, Malcolm Johnson Jr. is not it. Nick Martin is not it. Shane Hooks can't get any separation. Good athlete can high point a ball or something like that. Um, but But Shane Hooks cannot get any separation. He's not a good route runner. So I don't know what the answer is to how do we push the ball? How do we take a few shots that that e at least have an opportunity to be completed? Because that's the other big thing. When you have an offense that struggles with efficiency, can you make up for it in a big play? And there's virtually no chance that this offense creates a big play through the air. Like basically none right now. So even if they did execute really well in the run game or whatever, they're still going to have to put together a really impressive drive to go put, put points on the board because they don't have big play through the air ability. And it puts just so much pressure on, the, on them. So if Freeze wants to up the tempo maybe or even try to be more aggressive, I'm all for it. I just don't know what the answers are throwing the football. Like, be more aggressive, but I, I don't know how that looks unless you pair it with tempo. If you pair it with tempo – well, then there could be some stuff that comes open because you're running tempo and they're running maybe a little more base defense and they don't have a chance to get set. So if you pair it with tempo, I think you have you do have an opportunity maybe to get some guys open where, you know, whatever. But if you don't and you just say we're just going to be more aggressive, but we're not going to run tempo, I, I'm just – I'm all for – I am I want them to do it, but I'm not sure how it's going to work. <clears throat> yeah, tempo is the key, I think. Um because then it doesn't really matter. I mean, you almost go back to to the way that Gus did things. Okay, he simplified things a lot in his offense. Um, the run game was pretty, you know, you had a few schemes here and there, not anything crazy. And then the pass game was about the same. But he got people because he hit them with tempo and, and they couldn't handle it in time, even if they knew what was coming. Um, of course, that was before the substitution rule, too even after the substitution rule to an extent. Uh, I think that's the best bet for this team right now. I think that's the best bet. Uh, you, you, I, but, again, Hugh Freeze continues to say, and it was my theory I had all along, I'm worried about the defense when that when we get in that situation. I get that, too, because they're not deep. But it does help having Keontae Scott and Austin Keys back. That helps you a lot yeah. because those two guys right there can play, number one. Number two, they give you – a deeper rotation at those two spots. Yeah. Um, so, so that helps with the offense, in my opinion, having those two guys back. Now, you know, fingers crossed, you can get Mosiah and Asili Kite back because, boy, that right there 
could really give you some confidence on offense because he's a run stopper and he's the best they got at run stopping. So, you know, the, the more that they get comfortable with, with the defense, the better the offense is going to be. And I think holding Ole Miss to 28, there was a stretch there in the game where it was like, do you remember the Missouri game in 2021 where it was like, okay, three and out. Three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. Oh, last year? You know the Missouri game last year? That Auburn – no, it was 21, I think. The one that Missouri should have won? Maybe that was last year. Yeah, that was, that yeah, was it last was, year. It was. Yeah. You're right. It was last year. Uh, yes. Yeah, one of the worst football in. games I've ever seen. Yeah. Right. I thought we were going to see something like that with this game for a minute there because it started getting into that three and out on each side in the oh. third quarter. That's a testament to your defense. They're holding up in the third quarter in the second half. They were doing well against an offense that's supposed to be blowing you out. You look at the numbers after the game, and you go, well, that's not good, and it's not. They had too many big plays, but your defense held up okay. I think the more you see that as Hugh Freeze, as Philip Montgomery, as your offensive people, the better your offense will start to flow, in my opinion, and you can start getting into your tempo stuff. I, I That is the key. Uh, I think the defense has to prove that they can play that long and keep you in in ball games, which they've done a few times this year. But again, it was that ringer of the schedule that we knew was going to be that uh, that was going to give Auburn problems. We didn't, we couldn't have predicted these problems. Yeah, but um, this is where you kind of stop and pause and go: Do these same problems continue into Mississippi State? Because if that if that is the case, then you become way more concerned than at least I am right now. Because I am concerned, but I'm not like. You know, to me, I can see why they're doing things. At least I can see why. I can give you the why they're doing it. That was my biggest concern in the first place. I, I can't tell you why they're doing it. It's, this is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Now I can see why. And, and that helps me mentally a little bit. But I will lose that ability if they cannot do this against a lesser team like Mississippi State, Vandy, and, and all of these teams. By the way, New Mexico State's not bad. Watch them last night. Oh, great, Cole. Nah, I was just saying. Um, you no, know, I agree. And I was talking with um, my buddy Ben Leard actually um, uh, yesterday. And uh, and um, I kind of mentioned that to him. I said, now, here's the thing. You just played four pretty good – four really talented teams, four good teams. The next three games are not that. Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, Arkansas don't have the talent of what you just played. They're not the caliber of team. Doesn't mean Auburn can't lose them, but they're just a different caliber. So I'm I'm really interested to see what happens Saturday because you can't come back and go, you can't come back and go talent gap. That's not an excuse. You know what I mean? You can't yep. come back if you're here and go, well, we just played the number one, 12, and 15 team in the country. That's not going to fly the next three weeks. So we're going to find out a lot. Is it the opponent? Is it just Auburn played good teams? Is it you know, what, what's the balance? I think Auburn has got issues on offense no matter who they play, but can they overcome them a little bit against a, a lesser team on paper? And does it just look really bad because the issues are there? Combine that with a talented defense. And, you know, and even Ole Miss's defense, there's talent there. They do a good job. Georgia, of course. Even LSU. LSU struggled early in the year with some defensive things. There's still talent there. Um, and so we'll see. They maybe they're, they're they might even start to get it turned around a little bit. But yeah, well, I'm, I think we'll find out a lot these next three weeks about. Okay, now we have a much clearer picture on: is it talent? Is it scheme? We know some of that because they played good opponents. Now let's see them play really average opponents, and and see what it looks like. Um, I want to bring up something else that um, and get your get your thoughts on it that Hugh Freeze talked about, and that is expectations. Um, he said, um, you know, he talked about who they've lost to the best, the best teams in the country. Um, but what freeze said was, he said, uh, he talked about the fans. He goes, they've endured disappointing years and they're certainly in the growing pains with us right now. And by the way, I tweeted that out and somebody tweeted, where's the growing <laughs> I said, well, maybe it's behind the scenes. You can't see it. Um, Must not but he be said, watching recruiting. Yeah. Um, he said, uh, he said, the fans have a sense of what I sense, and that's that we are Auburn. 
We should take a backseat to no one in recruiting. And that's the approach we're taking. While there's certainly bumps in the road and people make of those what they will, that's you guys, us, fans, everybody makes of it what they will, but they are temporary and the time is coming when people will sense what Auburn truly is like our fans already do. Um, and I got this, I get this question <clears throat> from, I was actually talking with somebody at practice on Tuesday. What's the sense of the fan base? And I had somebody ask me on Twitter the same thing. And I'm like, I think you, I think there needs to be a distinction made. I think the vast, vast, vast majority of fans right now are upset with strictly the offense. They're, they're, they're mad at specifically what they're watching on offense, whether that's rotating the quarterbacks, whether that's just the offense in general, whatever. That's most of them. That is not the same as those fans being mad about the direction of the program or with Hugh or with Hugh Freeze being the hire. Like there are some of those. There are some of those that didn't want Freeze to be the coach, and they probably still don't. And there's probably a few people that are like, boy, I don't know if he's the man. There's probably some of that too, but you don't really have the data yet to make that determination in my mind. You can have that opinion. I just don't think you have the data to say that, to back it up very strongly. Most of the most of the consternation is offense. And even deeper than that, I think a lot of it comes because they've watched they've watched the roller coaster that is Auburn offense for years now and years. And they're like, really? We got a new coach and Philip, we're doing this again. There's there's a lot of things that are going into that frustration, but I think most of it is is centered specifically on the offense and not people are already mad that Hugh Freeze is the, the job he's doing and things like that. What did you kind of make of, of Hugh sort of taking the time to address specifically that? Hey, it was almost like, hey, fans, I hear you. We're I'm with you. I'm frustrated. We're we're gonna get there. We just played three really good teams. You know, not relax, but you know, put it in perspective is kind of what he was trying to specifically do. No, I think it was fantastic. I thought he handled it perfectly. Um for the situation you're in right now, there's it's really difficult in his position. Oh, I know. Uh, I've been the son of a head coach before who took over a program that was one in 19 in two years before he arrived. Um, and he turned it around, and went five and five the first year, but a lot of people there didn't understand what was going on when he did it. I think he had one of his best players on his team, he had to kick him off. And people are like, that was the best guy we had, and we won one game in two years. So you have to um, – So it gets worse before it gets better, and that's something that's a cliche and it's true. Sometimes you have to go through the mud in order to get through to the other side. And right now um, – well, I don't know. Let me ask you all a question. Do you, would, you rather, um, would you rather him be all ball all the time? Um, <clears throat> Brown Harson. Or would you rather him recruit? I don't know. I think you all had a problem with the way Brian Harson ran things. If not, you know, speak up. Did you like Brian Harson? Would you rather that? Was that your style? You talking about the Joker, Brian Harson? That's the one. The Joker. Hey, everybody's asking for more ball from Hugh Freeze. That's what you want, right, Brian Harson? No, nah, I don't think so. I think you would disagree with me on that. Uh, Hugh Freeze is doing a lot of recruiting right now. A ton. As the head coach, every and, recruit I talk to, and explain to people briefly the best you can. When like when you say that they're they're going well, what do you mean what, during the week? Like what do you mean the recruiting visits happen on the weekend? Like what do you mean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? He should be game planning when you're like he's recruiting. There's, you know, talk specifically yeah, okay. during the week. Like what takes away his time from going and, and game planning recruiting wise on a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon? I'll give you a great example. Um, and this, this excludes the staff. Don't even factor what the staff is doing. I want you to think about Hugh Freeze, okay? Forget Marcus Davis, Josh Aldridge, all these guys. Think about what Hugh Freeze does on a, day ba a daily basis. Go back to the bye week, okay? I don't know the entire details of what Brian Harson did on Auburn's bye week last year, but I don't think he left the building, okay? I, I certainly didn't have anything to cover that bye week. I'll put it that way, and I cover recruiting for Auburn Life. This year, I don't think Hugh Freeze was in the office. I think he was at schools. I think he was talking to coaches, to parents, doing everything he can to try to build his class. That's the difference. Um, 
And again, I will say this, and I will be a broken record about it. There are only so many hours in the day. Okay? I don't care how much you're getting paid. You only have so much time to do certain things. And if you're calling and recruit 14 times a day, it's going to take up some time. Okay? That means as much as you want to be in offensive game plans, as much as you say you might be, and, and as much as you're taking in what the offensive game plan is, it's also in the back of your mind, oh, I got to call KJ Bolden today. That was on the list. Oh, I've, I've got to talk to Jeremiah Beeman. You know, we're not going to have a chance unless I talk to him today. So it's a back and forth. It's a balance, just like there's a balance with the offense and, hey, do I go tempo like I always have or is that going to hurt me on defense and they're going to score 8,000 a game on me? It's a delicate balance. Trying to figure this out is is not easy. And you're in year one of a total rebuild with 20-plus new transfers. I asked you all the other day, is there another school in the country that has a first-year head coach with 20-plus transfers? I, there is. It's at Texas State, as, as uh, Zach pointed out, and that's not a Power 5 school. It's not an SEC school. Consider the schedule. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is this is um, as far as recruiting. I think you're above par as far as where the the team is at. Where where they thought they were going to be, record wise. Let's see what they can do on the back half. I, I'm very interested to see, and these things may continue. And then um, you know I'll grab my pitchfork too. <laughs> no, it's too early for that. But I do think, um, I do think, um, you know, I, I, the, the 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 points you made are good. I do. I would my playing devil's advocate would be, well, okay, well, if he feels like he has to do all that to recruit, what happens when he decides he doesn't have to do all that? When does that come? Is that a is that when you think you've got the staff to make up for it? Is that uh, the answer? Probably is when I feel like the program has elevated itself to where I don't have to do that. Where we have a where where I can have a go a nine win season, and a couple of top classes and the talent starts to flow, I don't have to put the same kind of work in. You still have to work, but I mean, it, when you're talking about building the foundation recruiting wise, you're gonna have to do a little bit extra. You have to do think about it like driving a car. You got to accelerate before you can put it on cruise control. I'm not saying anybody would ever do cruise control. There's a lot of work that goes into that, but I'm just saying you got to accelerate. You got to build up speed. And I think that's what he's trying to do sure. um, when he's putting a little bit of this extra effort in. And I will say, <clears throat> I don't think I've mentioned it on the message board, but I may make a post about it. I've heard that <clears throat> this, this move, this McGriff, this whole Wesley McGriff thing could end up being a phenomenal thing for Auburn on accident. Because I've already <laughs> heard, and Freeze said it on Monday, but you don't know if it's like, you know, Freeze is kind of sugarcoating it, right? Like he's he's doing a great job. He's trying to smooth over kind of the, the issue publicly. Yeah, you, you know, whatever. But I actually heard privately that McGriff is crushing it. And he's doing, he is now doing some of what Freeze has been doing. He's taking some of that off his plate, yeah, calling all huge. these kids during the week. McGriff is now doing some of that. And it's kind yeah. of happened on accident where they didn't want McGriff to come off the field. <clears throat> but you know, whatever, here it is. We want you to stay on staff. And now all of a sudden he's doing some of this calling. He's doing a really good job. It could, we'll see. It could, I could see, I could see it being a long-term thing. I could see McGriff staying on in this role and already freeze. I think has been freed up a little bit to game plan just in the last week. Was it, um, was it Hogbone on the message board that was talking about Bob Ross the other day? Hey, we don't make mistakes. We make happy accidents. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll watch it, and 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 if it, we'll watch it, and I'll and I'll kind of explain some of this on the board too, because people and you know, we're we're talking about this before I posted it, but I, I think that even the potential issues between McGriff and Roberts, if 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 McGriff is good in this role, I think that changes the dynamic of whether Ron Roberts stays or goes, because now you don't have to make that decision. Well, I got these two guys that clearly don't get along, so who, how do I handle this? Well, now potentially just keep Roberts. Everything's fine. McGriff's got this new role that could end up being a blessing in disguise. Um, we'll see. It's early, but I've heard some good things already about that being kind of a a surprising, like, whoa, this has actually been phenomenal so far. 
because McGriff's taking over some of these calls on a week uh, during the week that he yeah. was doing. Um, and he's he's very good with recruits <laughs> too, by the way. Yeah. you know, he 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 can do it. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about Peyton and Robbie real quick before we get out of here. So we talked to Peyton Thorne and Robbie Asher for the first time all year on Tuesday. Um, really, interesting. really interesting. I wasn't interesting there with stuff. you, Justin, but reading that and watching them speak, I was like, whoa. Yeah. So if you haven't go to auburnlive.com and you can read, I base I put up pretty much the entire Q and a from Robbie and Peyton. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to put their quotes up here and you read them. I didn't really want to try to piece it together and take stuff out. I just tried to put everything they said there. You can go read their insight. Um, <clears throat> watching them speak, Peyton is clearly um, extremely frustrated. And he was doing his best to give PC answers, but you can see it all over him. Um, he, he, he He's annoyed by what's going on. Um, he was asked about, what exactly does your offense look like when you're out there? And he's like, I mean, I think we're balanced. I think I can throw, we can run, I can scramble, we can run RPO. You can almost you can almost hear him saying, like, I, I don't know why I'm, we're rotating. Like, I don't know why I'm being taken out of the game. I feel like when I'm in there, we can run the offense. And Peyton knows the playbook, by the way. Like, it's not like he's they're putting Robbie in because Peyton doesn't know parts of the playbook or something. He He knows the playbook full. Then you have Robbie and Robbie takes a very different tone in his interview. And I appreciate Robbie's competitiveness. I do. I do too. Um, but he's just, he's, he's so focused on, you know, he, he, he went on these long tirades about how people view him as a quarterback about how he, he went on this long tirade about how he ignores social media. Well, if you can talk that much, about how you ignore social media, then you don't ignore social media. You're paying attention to it. I mean, he was talking about how people say he can't throw, and I just ignore those people. He's going on this tirade, basically trashing people that have an opinion. Um, it's like, Robbie, yeah, you're a better quarterback than the dude on Twitter who says you can't throw. Like, I think we all acknowledge that. I mean, that's not really your competition, man. Um, and it's not really a high bar either. Um so he's he's clearly still very, very bothered about how people view him. Um, he even sort of threw Quinn Ewers under the bus and said, I played the Texas quarterback is sitting out and with the same injury that I had last year and I played through. So he's still making excuses for his production last year and blaming it on injuries. And he definitely was injured. But I don't know why we're pointing that out. I don't know why he feels the need one year later to continue to point out that he was injured last year. So I don't know. I think Robbie, Robbie just he it was just two very different interviews. Listen and listen to them. they're both frustrated. I think Robbie wants more opportunities throwing the ball. Peyton doesn't want to be sit here and subbed out and rotated in. I specifically asked Peyton, how do you adjust to being rotated in and out? Like, how do you do that? He's like, I have no idea. Good question. <laughs> because I've never done it before. I've never seen it done like this. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> So <clears throat> there was they're frustrated for different reasons, um, but it was just it was in, it was interesting. They were interesting interviews, um, and I can't to me it sort of it showed a lot about each guy. And and again, I, I don't want to I don't want to bash a player. I'm not doing that. I'm just simply providing my insight on what I witnessed, like right in front of me, and. I think Peyton's really frustrated and tried his best to hold it in and give the right answer. And Robbie, he's just got to stop worrying about what people on Twitter think about his ability to throw the football. Like, who cares, man? Just be a competitor and play. And I think for the most part he is, but the long tirades, um, trash and fans and stuff, it's like, dude, just you, you got to back away from that. There's too many people in his ear telling him how awesome he is. And I wish he'd back away from that stuff. And just go be the best quarterback he can be and not have this giant chip on his shoulder because he doesn't get to throw some passes. I, I just, I don't know how healthy that is for him, but they were interesting interviews and I encourage people to go to auburnlive.com and read the full words of, of what they both said about what they're seeing on offense and what their, what their opinions are of what's going on. Yeah. Peyton's 
Peyton Thorne's body language has said that he does not understand the quarterback rotation all year. Um, he <clears throat> This pressing word that's been thrown around a lot and, and started by Hugh Freeze, which is 100% true, that's what he's doing when he's in the game a lot, um, is not necessarily uh, – some people perceived it as, well, he's only been here for whatever. Uh, he doesn't know the whole play. I don't think that's the case, and I don't think it's ever been the case. I think it's, hey, if I don't make a play – they're going to put number nine in. And he don't know how to handle it. And that's not his fault, really, because he's never had to handle it. And why should you? <laughs> I mean, if you won the starting job, you're the starting quarterback. That's how it should be, in my opinion. I don't like the two-quarterback system, and I will, you know, I have no problem um, going against that. But um, that's what it is. You can see it in his body language, and he sort of confirmed that by talking and saying those things. I don't understand it. I don't know what, why we – he didn't say – he didn't go that far. But it's as if he wanted to say, I don't know why we do that. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you know? That's what no. I got out of his comment about his package feeling like – he felt like his package is balanced. Now, the question was, what is your offense supposed to look like to Peyton? And he was like, I think we're balanced. I, we, I, I, can, I can scramble. I can throw. We can run. That – I can run RPO. Like I got out of that him stopping short of going, I can do everything. Yeah. Now, me, by me saying what I just said, I'm sort of assuming what he thought because he didn't say that. I thought he handled the whole thing well, pretty poised, in my opinion, and how he spoke about the issues. And it's not easy to speak about the issues without throwing somebody under the bus because. You know, that's what everyone's looking for. Who do you blame? Like, what, what, what is to blame here? Who is to blame? Is it you? Is it Freeze? Is it Montgomery? Is it Robbie? It's human nature for, for us as reporters to want to know why things are happening and, and get an answer so we can explain it ourselves when we're on a podcast, so to speak. Um, so I thought he handled it well. He, he held his own well. And, um, you know, it, it, I thought he played well against Ole Miss for what they were asking him to do. I'm grading him right now, and he's in the 80s. I did, too. I mean, I it, you look up at the numbers at the end of the day, and I, I thought he did fine. One of the things he talked about was, and it's difficult, kind of goes to what you're saying, is he, he, he mentioned he doesn't feel like – so you mentioned he's pressing. He doesn't feel like he is. He said, when I'm in there, I try to make the right play. I, I don't when I, I don't need to feel like I'm Superman when I get in the game after being rotated out. I need to if it's handoff, it's handoff. That's my play. And um and he and did I that. think he, he did does that more. Uh, huh? He did that more in the old Yeah. Basketball. I thought I thought so too. I thought uh, you know it is what it is. Robbie Robbie and, and to Robbie's credit, he had, he he admitted on Tuesday, hey, first play of the game is my fault. I should, I, that was my fault. I should have handed it off. I got excited and I made a play and I tried to do too much. And um, Robbie said that that's ha that that's how he goes in there and he thinks he has to make some great play or do too much. Maybe that interception Robbie threw, just kind of launching it downfield. And even the one the Peyton threw, Peyton was trying to make a play. <clears throat> um, that's later. <clears throat> that's later in the game. Those situations are different. Peyton, you're down 28 14. That's different than 14 14 for halftime. I would say in terms of how aggressive you need to be in trying to make a pass downfield that could get picked off. But Robbie took ownership of that first play, trying to do too much. That's difficult, man. If you're Peyton and you're like, I want to make a play, but to his credit against Ole Miss, for the most part, I thought he went out there and just made the play that was there and didn't try to force anything too much, where Robbie has a sense to do – he does that a little bit. But, but you're forcing these guys into the situation. If you're freeze and you're changing out the quarterbacks – you're adding a whole nother layer to them, which is, oh, also don't press. Like if if it was if I was the quarterback the whole game, I wouldn't feel that. I got, I mean I'm I'm out there every possession. We're gonna run our stuff, take the shots when they're there. We're gonna be patient. When you start rotating, you add in. You've now added another layer of pressure on both Robbie and Peyton that your snaps are gonna be limited. Now you might feel the need to go press, but I don't, but I need you to, to stop that urge and just run the offense. You know what I'm saying? You've added mm -hmm. another layer of complexity to their ability to execute. And then you've basically said, but you need to now manage that as well. And that's, 
that's a tough thing to deal with for both of them. Well, on the news side and not the analytical side, we're not going to see a change in that. That's the news. Um, he's going to continue to do it whether we, you know, agree with it or not. Talking about we as you and I, Justin, or the entire fan base, whether they believe in it. That's that's his that's his goal. I mean, that's his plan for the year. He's going to do both of the quarterbacks. I think it was Anthony who called in on our Colin show was like, you know, Freeze has the quarterback he wants, except they're two separate people. <laughs> he said if he could infuse Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne, he'd have the perfect quarterback for him. But that's why he's having both of the quarterbacks out there. I don't understand that. I mean, think about some of the quarterbacks we heard that he was recruiting. Grayson McCall, Riley Leonard, Devin Leary. Do any of those guys look like Robbie Ashford? They're mobile. Peyton Thorne's really athletic. Peyton Thorne had more rushing I yards against Ole Miss than Robbie did. I I don't buy the – he needs some su- a super athletic quarterback like Robbie. Uh, Devin Leary's not that. Riley Leonard's mobile and athletic. Grayson McCall's mobile and athletic. Peyton Thorne is mobile and athletic. <clears throat> I think I, I, just, I think he meant more for the situation they're currently in. I think that's what he meant. Where you're trying to look for anything on offense and you don't have receivers. <laughs> to see, throw. that that's where it gets to. I don't think Peyton can run. It's we're, it's you're lacking maybe things in the passing game receiver wise to create big plays. And so to try to make up for that, you're now infusing the Robbie package in to create a little confusion, uh, to make the defense prepare for other things. Maybe we can break a long run there. Um, And so you're, you're trying to substitute kind of a lack of playmaking receivers and a potential for big play there. You're trying to substitute that with, okay, well, is there some other package now I can substitute in that can make up for some of those yards. And then also, the Robbie package is going to shorten the game because it's pretty much going to be running the football. And he was like, that would be a good thing too. Um, but I think the more you dive into that, shortening the game's not working. Ole Miss ran 74 plays. That's a ton with the shortened clock rules. Yeah. So yeah. shortening the game isn't – it's not really working. So, like, to me, that should be thrown out. We try to shorten the game. I mean, it's not working. You're, you're, you're giving up points and you're giving up – you know, I, I don't know. I, I, that should be – I think that's the yeah, Zach, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, Heather Dennis. She hung out with Freeze all day, and he probably told her, "Hey, our receivers are not very good." Uh, so put that out there. <laughs> um, no, um, I forgot what I was going to say. That that blindsided me. <laughs> the Heather Dennis comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, no the 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 shortening the game is not a bad strategy, in my opinion. It's the away you're trying to shorten the game is not working. Just like I said, I mean, I've done the play script. That means I've done the play-by-play breakdown. I know when you made a move and when you decided to do this and when you threw the football and when you ran the football. I thought there were several times where they could have kept it on the ground. Jarquez Hunter was – he looked back to his true form on a couple of plays and like he was shot out of a cannon a few times. I would have tried that more. Hey, what about Brian Batie? He's pretty good. Try him some more. There's there's like Jeremiah Cobb. That guy's a game breaker. There's some things there where you could go, all right, if you're really trying to shorten the game, it wouldn't it be a little bit better if you use these guys and ran the ball more? Isn't that a better shot at getting the first down or staying ahead of the chains, as as a lot of coaches say? Well, and And even like that makes no sense to me. Brian Batie had a couple of games where he started to flash. Like, okay, I mean, right? Like, um, yeah. it might have been A and M, A and M, and then Georgia. He had moments and he had, he looked good, and then he disappears. LSU, nothing. Ole Miss, couple carries right there in the middle of the game. Jeremiah Cobb had moments in the beginning of the year. Had some moments against LSU late running the football. Doesn't did he get a touch? Didn't get a touch against Ole Miss. I, that's some of the stuff that's, that is is weird to me. I understand every game is different, but like what you're lacking on offense is speed. Well, you know what Jeremiah Cobb has and Batie has playmaking ability, open field speed, and they just don't touch the ball. I don't know stuff like that is 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 odd to me. Um, if you're trying to get, I mean, put put Robbie in, put 
put two running backs with him. You put the two tight end system you're trying to run, but put a couple of backs in there. Run zone read with one or fake one and run the option. I don't know, man. There's just you got some backs there that are talented and you're looking for playmakers. And there's games where Batie and Cobb com- combined don't barely touch the ball. And um, I, I don't know. Maybe there's I don't screw toss to run a screen pass to him. Run, run, try to get them the ball and run them out of the backfield and throw it to him in the open field. I, I don't know. Those are those are playmakers if you're searching for some, but yeah. And just to change it up a little bit on the defensive side, I, I think Nehemiah Pritchett has played well and he hasn't been talked about a lot. I think he's your best coverage guy. Kay and Lee, um, he's being exposed just a little bit. He's a freshman. Yeah. Thought he got exposed a little bit in the LSU game, and obviously Lane Kiffin saw it. The one time he had a one single man matchup, he takes a shot on Kay and Lee. And these are the things on defense that can keep you better offensively too you know you gotta you gotta mix and match correctly i don't know if k and lee's the guy that needs to be out there on an island all the time right now just don't think that's no. the best option that's another thing but uh, on the good side on the defensive side is is austin keys and keontae scott man do they help a lot i mean they yeah, help dude. a lot is a fantastic player he in, a fantastic in fact player. my opinion is if you didn't have those two i mean they made a lot of plays between the two of them mm-hmm the game probably looks more like LSU did. <clears throat> yeah, they they um but that speaks to how much injuries actually do hurt you and we do need to take that into account with the roster you currently have cuz you just don't have enough. Yeah, they don't have a guy. I mean to compete in the SEC, you got to have a whatever your starters are, the dude that's backing him up better be really really close. Like it, yeah. it should be almost a 1A 1B situation. You know, obviously you're going to have superstars where it's not you're, you're, there's going to be a clear drop off. But the hope is, if that's the case, it's a superstar. So the drop, even the drop off, would be, you know, a really good player. Where they're in now is their starters. They have some really good players, and then the drop off is big. They they need to have one one A one B across the board, and they don't have close to that. So it's great to have Keontae and Austin back out there. No question, injury wise, they're. They're back to doing okay. They're Nasili Kite being out <clears throat> offensive line. He said there were some injuries, guys banged up, but everybody seemed to play against Ole Miss. Um, and so we'll kind of see how that translates in Mississippi State. It'll be interesting. Mississippi State does a lot of stuff on defense um, that Connor Lou is going to be massively tested. Um, I'll have, a, I'll have, I have, we talked to Connor Lou too. I'll have those quotes up on the site here soon. Um, but, uh, Pretty calm, composed guy. I think he's, he's, he thought he played well. Freeze mentioned a couple of communication things in the second half. Um, but saw pro football focus rate graded him pretty well. He said he played pretty well. Connor said he thought he played pretty well. So um, I expect him to play well against Mississippi State. But uh, l- let's maybe watch early on in that game and see if there's any communication issues with the way Mississippi State moves around and Connor Lou trying to – Communicate what to do when, but he's that's going to be pass protection stuff. Huh? Yeah, that's going to be pass protection stuff all the way. We didn't really get to see him in that situation too much, so that's where you're like, okay, he did have a good game in the run game for sure, and I can attest to that because I've watched him; he's very good um, from the game last week. But pass protection, this is where you get into the whole, hey, I got a freshman; he's really good, but <laughs> do I want him playing all these snaps right now? I don't think so. And that only makes your your head coach more nervous. So, you know, this is this is the balance right now. You're, this is where you find him worried about things. This is the last thing I'll say on the tempo stuff so we can get out of here. I, I, I would love to do the research. I don't have time right now to do it. But about shortening the game and all that, well, you know, what's the difference in a three and out at normal pace and running tempo and getting a first down and then punting after, let's say, five or six plays. The only difference is if they run tempo and go three and out immediately. That's quick, yes. But if they run tempo and it allows them to get a couple extra first downs, and then let's say they punt after five plays or six plays or something, well, that's about the same as you just going three and out and running at a normal pace. So I I just think some of the tempo and shortening the game and put – some of that's being overblown because with tempo, you the hope is with tempo, you pick up you, there's a couple of there's more opportunities. You know, you catch the defense sleeping, you get a big play, you get a first down, 
And also, by the way, with tempo, you're going to have more plays anyway. Now, that goes for the defense too, but you need more opportunities. Often. So I just think, man, I think, almost feel like it's being overthought a little bit. Like, I would, like because you run tempo, all of a sudden the defense is going to go face 90 plays in a game. I, I mean, that's not – the I, I would I would bet that there was a in a, a plan or a, a talk about hey, um you know if that first drive if we get if we get up in this game at any point let's start going tempo but they haven't been able to do that yet. No, so <clears throat> it's probably like you know, all right we're down by seven. There's no way we can put their offense right back on the field here. So and then it just becomes this chain reaction of hey we you know we're. We're in this. We're in a hole now. We can't do it now. As the game goes on, I would bet if Auburn scores first, or if some somehow can hold them from scoring first, that they start doing more tempo too. Now they're probably going to do it anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think Saturday will be interesting. If you're ever going to try to change something up, um, Saturday would be the day. Because it's it's you're you're in you're entering a three game stretch against teams that are on paper less than what you just played, and you're at home. So if you want to go out there and say, let's make a shift in tempo, let's make a shift in passing, let's 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 whatever whatever you want to do strategically, Saturday would be a good day to start. To, would be to try it because um, you're 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 playing at home. You you know don't don't try it on the road. Come home and try to create some new momentum. And you know, if you want to pick up the pace a little bit, or if you want to do that and just see how it goes, I think Saturday would be a would be a good day to try to do some of that. But you got to commit to it, man. <clears throat> Don't go out there and try to run tempo a couple of play a couple of possessions and it doesn't work, and then revert back. You got to either do it or don't. You know, either do it or don't. If you're gonna, I mean, I wish they'd leave Peyton Thorne in more. I just feel like, I feel like, the offense at its best would be Peyton with consistency and rhythm. And letting him get used to the game and and go and use Robbie in certain situations, but I don't know. I think like I'm talking to a brick wall at this point because um, Hugh seemed determined to uh, to to have these Robbie packages, and so um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right, everybody, go to AuburnLive.com. We'll have coverage all week, um, recruiting coverage as well as Auburn tries to get the recruiting rolling. Um, SEC is tough in recruiting right now. I think Auburn's doing a good job, but you look up and they're ninth in the league. <laughs> if you if you include Texas and Oklahoma, and you're like, geez, what are we like, 14th in the country, and we're ninth in the SEC? So it's tough going, but you got to get there. You got to you got to yeah, threaten that top 10. You got to be there no matter what. So um, mm -hmm. we'll have plenty of recruiting coverage this week as well. AuburnLive.com. Subscribe to our YouTube page and, and turn on notifications. Do that as well. And then special shout out to Session Cocktail our primary sponsor, Downtown Auburn on Magnolia. Uh, go check them out for happy hours, four to six. Um, great game day environment, game day drinks, and all that good stuff. Um, you can get on their wait list, go pop over to Hamilton's or Taco Mama or something like that and eat, and then pop over there and have some drinks. So go check, check, go check out Session Cocktail in Downtown Auburn. All right, let's get out of here. We'll come back. We'll be back in a few days with the Modcast right before Auburn prepares for Mississippi State. Uh, for Cole, I'm Justin. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.